Well, so tell us about WebSockets because a lot of the examples out there are about are HTTP based because that's just the the most common one. Um, but tell can, can you give us a bit of a background on what are WebSockets anyway? Yeah. So in case like in our system, uh, as I told you in Respond, it is a messaging platform. So all the messages coming from WhatsApp, Messenger, all these platforms, they come into our panel and then all the messaging that is occurring there. So we are using WebSockets so that we do not have to refresh or call the API again and again. WebSockets are connected like on the front end and back end. They are talking to each other. The connection is established. If there's an event on the back end or on the front end, they just fire it and the other client just listen to it. Well, do you want to get into your your case study? Because I'm I'm interested to see what you went and did with that. Sure, sure, sure. I think we can share the screen. Okay. So, like, just to give you a background, like previously in Respond, like we have one WebSocket server. Like all other services, we have like three instances or four instances. But in case of WebSocket, we just have a one big giant server. It handles all the load. Uh, as I told you, like 20 million plus like messages coming in and then like one server is handling all of that. So then we eventually realize, you know, like there's a limit that we can scale that server. Like eventually we are going to face that problem that we cannot scale more and we are going to start facing different problems. So then we realize, you know, we should update the whole socket server. Then what we did, we like uh, created like multiple socket servers. They are talking to the clients, but the problem was like how they will communicate with each other. So there is all, uh, already a support for it using Redis, Redis adapter. So we implemented Redis adapter. So in case like we have like four or five socket servers and like one socket server message the client and then the client is connected to like some other socket server so how we get to know like from which server mm -hmm. how many clients are connected there can be an issue so when we implemented redis adapter that issue was solved and everything was working fine all the uh, socket servers are communicating using redis and then they are communicating with the front end so then the challenge was like uh, all the people asked you know like how much load we are putting on Redis, like what is the right, uh, you know, instance type of Redis we should select. I was like, you know, I was also a bit confused. And then like, uh, they are also like, you know, with this new implementation, because we changed a lot of things and like we made our own NPM module. So they're like, you know, is that thing, uh, you know, like production ready or stuff? Because previously we are using like a open source module. So then uh, I, I was like, okay, I have one thing in mind. So I just uh, created test cases for it. So initially, like we decided, okay, this is the use case. We will do manual testing and we will check, okay, all the different scenarios because there are like different scenarios, like one person message, another person message. It is one to one chat or one to many and stuff like that. So what I did is like, I basically uh, decided to create like different test cases for it just to check, okay, the sockets are working fine or not when we put like a lot of load on it. So this uh, test case one is uh, the basic one. Like in that, what we do is we connect with our server and we, you know, connect with our server and like check the connection is established. We ping the server and get the response back. So in that, like when we like run this snippet with like uh, different, like we had like different, you know, scenarios. Okay, we will run that snippet with 1000 virtual users, 2000, 3000, just to check at which level, how much, you know, what is the graph of Redis and sockets. And on AWS side, we are checking all the graphs and stuff like uh, how much are, you know, at what instance type or how much instance can handle that, how much traffic. So yeah, so in the first, Test case, it was just like, you know, just connecting with server and pinging the server and getting the response back, checking that, okay, the socket connection is established. We can uh, ping the server and get the response back. So it was just, uh, you can say a smoke test. Uh, smoke test, you know, our socket server is working and it is doing good. So this is like the screenshot of it. Like uh, all the messages are sent and like it was working fine. So then uh, the second test case was a bit more detailed because we wanted to like just check like in how it works in like real scenario. So in this Quick like- Quick question, Huzaifa, sorry to interrupt. I was just curious, was that Grafana Cloud K6? Yeah, this is this is Grafana Cloud one. This is Grafana nice. Cloud one. Nice. 
Yep. So did you, when you started using it, were you already, did you go straight to Grafana Cloud K6 or did you use K6 Cloud initially? Initially, I used K6 Cloud, but I, at that time, I didn't like explore uh, that much. Like in uh, this one, Grafana Cloud, I explored like different options. Nice. How are you finding it so far? Because that's relatively new, us moving over right. to Grafana Cloud K6. Yeah, it, it is it is very awesome. Like it, it is like very simple and easy to use UI and like and then you also get like free tier as well. Like there are like if you yeah. create your account, you can use that. You get to know if you like the product, just subscribe to it. And yeah, that is also a good like getting to know about it. Don't worry about paying it in the start. Just like start using it. Yeah. And yeah. And then you can also create test case from the cloud as well. I usually prefer like creating on my system and then like running on the cloud. But there is like a good uh, intuitive UI. You can yeah, the test create builder. script. Yeah, create script and like visual editor. It also show you the, you know, the whole chart. Okay, virtual users increasing and all that stuff. Like it is very good, yeah. I would say. So I think what Huzaif is talking about for those who haven't used Grafana Cloud K6 is when you're looking at the scenarios and and kind of how long you want um, the load to stay at a particular level, there is something in Grafana Cloud K6 where it visualizes that as you're putting in those stages. Sometimes it can be difficult. Like I noticed, Huzaifa, for, for your scripts, you have a comment there that kind of explains it nicely. But um, on Grafana Cloud K6, it's just a little bit more visual. Yeah. Uh, that is like uh, because uh, on Grafana Cloud, it is very visual. But like when we create script, like if you want to test like, you know, millions of uh, virtual users yeah, yeah. Like, you know actually put load on your system then you just do it from your laptop and then yeah. like, because on cloud like on free tier we have like 100 virtual user limit and then uh -huh. on paid tier like it's not like you just put millions of virtual users and just run the script so there's like a threshold to that as well nice so just, yeah, talking about the second test case. In that test case, what we did is like uh, we actually logged in into our system. I just changed that URL because uh, I cannot like uh, because of some concerns from the organization. They said, you know, it will be very, you know. Of course. Everything. Don't want everyone to know that one. <laughs> yeah. So, so in that, like what happened, like first, uh, I log in into our platform, the login is made, then the token is saved. And then we actually check the organization, just like it is a basic API, you get the organization details, then you send a message. So in that case, like it is like actual scenario in our system. So a user login, you get the organization detail, you send a message. And then this test case, we ran that as well, like, you know, with 1,000, 2,000, so just to check it. Like, and then uh, after that, that test case also went fine. And then we decided, like, uh, this is the result of that. You guys can see, like, it is very good, the visuals and everything. So uh, the results that I posted here, it is because uh, we are using Grafana Cloud. So virtual users, you just see, like, 40 max. But the one that we actually, like, run, uh, we, like, ramp up the virtual users to, like, a lot. So, yeah. But to visualize it, like, I also run some of them on the cloud as well just to see. And I... This is like the overall like result of that, this one. And the below one is like, this is like also a good thing about Grafana Cloud. Like you see like the whole at the top, just the whole uh, picture of all the APIs combined. And then when you scroll down, you see all the APIs. And when you click on a particular API, you also see like all the like the whole chart of that particular API as well. So what is the trend of that API? So it, it was working fine, the request and response, like the response was coming very fast and the messages are going. So that also went fine. And then in the end, the last scenario was we just, uh, as I said, you know, like using the extension, you can just create the whole user journey. User comes from here, user went there, then user saw a notification, then user went to the messaging. Then user sends a message, then wait, and then did this operation, and then again send a message. So in the last test case, uh, I will not like explain that because it is very lengthy. But like in that, <laughs> like uh, it was like the whole user journey, and then it also went fine. Like we saw like uh, the results and all of that. So it was 
it was good. So uh, all the test cases went fine. And uh, in the end, we decided, OK, this new logic is working fine. Uh, and then I will show the impact on Redis as well. Just a moment. So in this, you can see like all the requests made. All of them are good. And then there is like no failures. System was responding also very good. And uh, I also take a screenshot of send message, OK, because this was the main endpoint that we need to test along with all the other uh, real life scenario. So then we, because the whole uh, point of testing was first is like, you know, we need to check like how the web sockets are working because web sockets, like previously we had like one, now we had like multiple. And then we also need to check when we have like multiple web socket servers, they are communicating with each, each other using Redis. So mm -hmm. What is the load on Redis? So now you can see some sort of like benchmarking, like with 100 user, what is the graph in this graph? Like 15 minute is the timeline. So, and then uh, you can see like some things going up. Then I make it to 500 virtual user. Then I make uh, the increase the virtual user to 2000. So, and then like below as well, like I uh, take a screenshot uh, selecting three hours. Uh, slot because to just to get the actual picture all these graphs are like aws dashboard not grafana otherwise it would be very more beautiful so, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah just like anyone seeing it and they know about grafana they must be you know wondering like why grafana charts are so dry now so yeah <laughs> so yeah like uh because our case study was not, you know, just uh, we didn't want to visualize. We just wanted to check once. So we just uh, AWS chart was good in that sense. So we checked and in the end we realized, you know, there was not much load on Redis as we are thinking that we will select this instance and stuff. Like we, right. I think we scale, uh, we tested about like 10,000 uh, virtual users. There was like two, three percent change in the CPU memory usage in the Redis cluster. So then we decided, like, it is like a very small instance. Like, it was like a very small or mid, mid medium instance. It is not like recommended for even like production. So then we decided, like, oh, that means like because we are only using Redis PubSub in that uh, case study. So then we decided, okay, we don't have to worry about that. You know, like if we just go with uh, Redis like production instance, normal one, like it is good because uh, it's not much lower and then all the these things are working fine. So yeah, uh, and then like we are like very, you know, uh, we decided, okay, it was good. And then we deployed all of this to production and uh, up till now, it is working fine, and I hope so. It keeps on going fine because I worked on all of this, and I also did some of the testing. So yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Redis is pretty impressive, actually, for <laughs> for for that database. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's kind of funny because you you worry about having that one large WebSocket server, right? So then it's like, okay, yeah, we need to split that up have multiple WebSocket servers, but then now you need to have that database so you can share state amongst those WebSocket servers. And then now it's like you're putting all this load on Redis and then Redis just seems to be just, yeah, okay, whatever, I'll do, keep, you know, keep it coming. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't knew, like, I also thought, like, because uh, I knew, like, we're not using, like, Redis actual memory we will be using redis pops up but i thought like you know like the me medium instance or will be you know yeah. destroyed like it will go to like yeah warning state and like it will not yeah. work but like i was also shocked like when like ten thousand virtual users there was no sleep in between so that means you know thousands of requests are yeah. going and, like Redis handled it very well and then like all the socket, everything, because the previous implementation, it also includes some PHP. It is like very complex code in that sense, not very simple node, a web socket server that we usually implement uh, in every day, like all the projects. So to change it, like it, it is like bit complex uh, implementation on the back end. So, but like, yeah, I would say like KSX really help us, you know, just to be very certain that, okay, this implementation is working fine because on staging, uh, like whatever you do, you cannot put a lot of load on that. And so, yeah. So in that case, like we actually did put a lot of load and everything went fine. That's cool. 
Yeah, I mean, so so from those load tests and everything and discovering that, like, you know, you you were really over provisioned on your Redis database. I mean, did you do the FinOps thing then? And did you did you reduce the uh, the the cost and size of that Redis thinking that, you know, yeah, we're over provisioned. We don't need to spend that extra money. Yeah, we, we like because at that time we didn't like uh, it was a testing instance that we created because it was a new code that uh, new you can say you know feature enhancement that we are drawing. So, what we did is like we initially decided okay, we will just choose this instance of Redis, it was like too costly, but we are like right. too scared because our whole system actually works on messaging, you know, if messaging stop, like all the <laughs> then it's all, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's the only <laughs> channel of like all of that. So uh, then like, you know, uh, we, in the end, we get to know, okay, like if we just choose like a normal instance as well, like obviously it will save us a lot of cost. And then on top of that, we're also confident that it, 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 we are not compromising the whole system reliability and all of that as well. So this is the main point. Yeah, we have cool. some love for you in the comments. Hassan Balok says, who's I find your content is awesome. Your test series helped me a lot. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say like the test series, like I also like shared some of the videos on LinkedIn. Like a lot of people like, uh, you know, even messaged me as well. Like I remember uh, creating a video on that automated test cases generation using the extension. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people like, I don't know, nine, 10 people reposted that. A lot of people messaged me, bro, like, this is such a cool tool. Like, how did you explore that? I said, you know, That's like, awesome. this is like, so I get like a very good feedback and a lot of people from my QA team as well, because they also, you know, asked me like, yeah, this is a great tool. We can also use that and stuff. So they're also, you know, getting used to it. They haven't actually started using it properly. So, but like, yeah, they're just learning it and maybe yeah. like they also start using it. Awesome. So I have a question. I didn't quite see it in your script, but what were you using to test Redis from K6? So, yeah, if I can also open the script as well here. So basically, we don't like actually test Redis directly, right? What we do is when we send the message, there are like multiple WebSocket servers. Internally, they are communicating with each other using Redis. So to test that, what we have to do is we have to send like a lot of messages. All the messages will go to like a, a API. API, obviously the clients are connected in like, you know, different, like one is connected to one like uh, instance, the other one is connected to socket two, the other one is to socket three. And like, then we have to decide the Redis, using Redis, we decide like, okay, this message, you know, the listener is uh, also on socket three, socket four, not on socket one. So socket two and three will send emit the, you know, the payload. So internally sockets, uh, the Redis was used internal communication, not like external and everywhere. So just to test that, what we have to do is we have to just send a lot of messages. And then like, uh, there are like three, four uh, front end clients that are actually like connected with all the different uh, servers. And then like from there, we get to know, okay, all the like front end, uh, you know, I had like multiple laptop open, all of them connected. So I was checking the messages. Okay, the messages are coming and all that. I was that went fine. So yeah. So I wanted to I asked because I wanted to know if you had if you know that there's actually now a, a Redis experimental module for 4k6. It used to be a separate extension. But now actually, it's just baked into k6 and you just have to import it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so okay. you could go directly against Redis if you wanted to read oh, and write to it. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah. That is good. Like, I haven't like checked that. Like I remember like 10, 15 days ago, or like I don't know, maybe like 20 days ago, I checked the documentation. <laughs> There are like a lot of new things coming yeah. in. So yeah. yeah, they're they're always changing things. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. this used to be the way that it works is we have a lot of these as extensions when we're kind of just, ex you know, we're just trying things out and we're not sure what's broken yet. And then when we know that people are using it and that it's a little bit more stable, then we actually move it to the to within K6 core. And that's what happened with K6 Redis. I think this only happened like, I want to say a couple months ago or something, it became experimental. 